Hey, man, what's up? How you doing, Chris? Hey, Arcade ran right in the door. I just, uh, I just got this, like, basically, uh, what, a couple of hours ago? Retro Ralph, what's up? True Sinister, all the regulars in the house, like, within seconds. It's amazing. You guys are just, like, like, on the ball. So, uh, so I basically, I worked until a little after five, and then... I had to go for like, you know, Lily makes me do the whole exercise thing. So I had to do that. Um, I, I really haven't done anything with this. So I basically set up the cameras and uh, here we are. So just kind of I wanted to do a, uh, a live chat anyway, because I hadn't done a, a video this week. It's been it's been incredibly hard to to really stay up with YouTube lately. And uh you know, I'm working on so many projects in the basement, like Daytona's like all apart down there. Um, and like to actually like get that stuff done, um, work full time and then try to like do YouTube videos. It's just, it's just not working out lately, but, um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a nice surprise just on the doorstep here today. Um, so I really haven't done anything with it. Um, Hey Mike, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, I haven't really done anything with this. Uh, other than basically turn it on, um, look over a few uh, things with the controls. Um, if the audio is too loud, let me know. You guys will have to. You guys will have to tell me. Um, you know if the volume from the machine is is too loud or not. But you know I'll take a look at it, and you know we can. I'm sure you guys have seen videos already. Um, obviously, I know Retro Ralph um, has done one. Um, I guess ETA Prime did one. He he messaged me. I guess that was last week because um, he had a unit and then was was going to try to send it to me. But um, yeah, uh, it's just kind of have been. Um, I, I haven't watched any of those videos. So um, oh, Sabo's Arcades. Uh, I, I was texting with him a little bit today. Um, yeah. So it's no disrespect to Retro Ralph or. Um, <laughs> ETA Prime or any of those guys who have done reviews, I've I've not I've intentionally not looked at those videos because I want just I don't want any type of bias. I just want to see it for the first time and kind of um, you know have my own impressions without um, kind of knowing ahead of time some of the negatives or positives, right? So um, yeah, I just kind of try to keep myself uh, away from all the the spoilers, if you will. And uh, this weekend, I'll probably go through it a little bit more, obviously, than um, <laughs> the hour I basically had to kind of look at this and um, and whatnot. What's up, Andre? So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the first thing you guys probably can see, I'm, I'm trying not to mess around with um, the cameras too much. Um, but you guys can probably see the, the Ronald McDonald uh, marquee that's on here. It's not the actual stock marquee. And that's a print um, done by Sabo's Arcades. It's a custom. Uh, some of you guys probably know um, the Cabaret Neo Geo, the, the real small cabinets that were actually made by SNK. They, uh, I guess they were placed in McDonald's at some point. I know it's really hard to find information on that. But um, it was a legit marquee that had Ronald on it, and um, I've seen pictures of it online. Some of you guys probably have too. I know I actually saw a couple years ago on eBay somebody had one of the the actual like uh, fiberglass marquees, and I, I don't remember what it ended up selling for more than more than I was willing to pay for it. But all of this to say, uh, when uh, Sabo's Arcades got a hold of this, if you don't know who who he is, he does he has a um, he has a website where he does all kinds of uh, repro art for arcade machines. He does skins and stuff for arcade one-up machines. So you can kind of dress those things up a little bit if you're you're wanting to change the theme. Or um, he did some Rampage things recently with one of the original artists for Rampage. And, and they did some custom artwork from the original artist, which is really cool. Toppers, all that kind of stuff. But he did uh, kind of his own take on the Ronald McDonald Neo Geo Marquee. 
And uh, so when I pulled it out of the box, that's like the first thing I saw was like Ronald McDonald on this thing. Um, but yeah, he did a good job. It looks really good. I mean, I if you didn't know, um, I mean, it looks like something that could probably be legit. I mean, it's um, it's a good quality print, uh, as is all the stuff that he does over there. So yeah, I would definitely um, check out his website if you're you're interested in that kind of thing. I guess some of you guys will, I'm for sure will probably be buying this. Um, I don't know um, how many of you. Uh, it's it's five hundred dollars, which uh, is is a lot, um, but it is um, you know it is pretty sturdy. I actually popped this thing up on a on a scale. It weighs uh, just over twenty nine pounds. Um, yeah, so uh, somebody I, I think on on YouTube today said something about like, can you can you take it in the car? I, I don't know if they were kidding or not, but I, you're not gonna you're not gonna sit with this on your lap <laughs> if that's what you're thinking. It's it's not that kind of a thing. It's really uh, I th I'm, I forget. I think I've got um, yeah a tape measure here. This thing is eh, it's about nineteen and a quarter across, and I think it's twenty five. Yeah, it's about 25 inches tall and weighs 20, uh, 29 pounds. So you're not gonna you're not gonna take this in the car with you. Um, he may have been joking, um, but yeah, I mean definitely you need some space for this somewhere. I mean it's a true bar top, so I mean I guess if you have an area like that, you know, it pretty good. Like I mean it's it would definitely look in its place, you know, on something like that. But it's it's pretty cool. I mean, the riser, I know, I forget how tall that is, but um, uh, yeah, I could definitely see this sitting on there and, um, you know, kind of being more, I guess, an arcade one-up height. But I, I got to be honest, I kind of like it just how it is. Um, you know, I, I like the way it looks now, and I like the ability to maybe move it and put it on like a desk or on a bar. Uh, somewhere like that, I, I could definitely see that being more convenient in some ways versus having it up on a pedestal. But um, I don't know. Um, it's 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 definitely bigger than I thought it was going to be, which is not a bad thing. So um, Mike says his local McDonald's had the mini cabaret. That's awesome. I didn't really know. I really didn't know um, anyone that I've I've talked to recently that that has seen that or remembers that. Um, DGC, yeah, this is the new Neo Geo thing. Um, <laughs> drive through at McDonald's. Uh, Super Retro Pie, what's up, man? Yeah, just taking the inventory here. Who's in the chat? Just trying to say hi to everybody. It's always this this hard like conundrum thing because it's like I I, I I always get distracted whenever I go live because I always just want to talk to people and see what people are doing and, and what they're they're up to. Um, but. Uh, uh, and then I and then I don't pay attention to like the game um, I have up or anything. But um, yeah, I, I guess uh, just preliminary, um, you know, looking at this uh, again. If the speakers are too loud, let me know. I can kind of hear um, shock troopers. But um, yeah, I, so it's funny because this is the one game that I that I loaded up first to play, and. Um, I'll go ahead and drop a few. The uh, the select game in the center is what is adding credits. Um, and I'll say start. So the interesting thing about this, um, the stick is what I noticed right away as soon as I started playing this. Um, there's a little bit more throw on the stick than what like I would be used to like on a normal. I know I know it's not a real Neo Geo cabinet. I get it. Um, but the stick has a lot more throw. And so I, I like shock troopers. Like I, I play this pretty regularly on my cab. Um, but it, it's funny cause I, I've had to kind of like readjust just how I'm, I'm playing because the stick is so loose. And this is a game, if you're familiar with this, that, um, you know, I kind of like having that nice, like tight stick because you're, you're changing directions and kind of like whipping it to, uh, to change your, your fire angle and um you know it's it's just it was just i don't want to say it's a bad experience because it's not it's just getting used to that um you know i'm it, it's a personal preference thing i i would feel like if i were to buy this like i would have to like change the stick out like i, I can't play shock troopers like 
this. So that was kind of one of the things. But, you know, some people really like that longer throw on things, um, you know, for fighting games or whatever. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. So uh, that's definitely something I, I'd want to look at trying to, to sub out. But um, I don't know if you can. It's, it's probably hard to see some of the, the screen and stuff on because it's, you know, the, the cameras and we're live here. But um, the picture really looks good. I will say that. Like, I was really impressed when I looked at the LCD, the quality of the image on here. Um, when it boots up, there's a little bit of, of light bleed across the bottom. But, I mean, good Lord. It's, um, you know, it's, it's not meant to be a high-end television. It's, uh, it's a gaming uh, console or, um, you know. It, so there's, there's some light bleed, but it's not terrible. Like, I'm sitting here playing it. I, I'm not looking at that. And I think the colors really pop. I mean, it looks like it's a it's a decent quality monitor. And I was watching some of the the gameplay scroll through uh, before uh, we went live here, and it's it, it's very smooth. There's not a lot of like ghosting or or anything or blurriness when the screen kind of you know moves and stuff, which is also good. Like I thought that's a that's a good sign. So it's funny because I'm kind of into this blind. Um, again, I haven't looked at anybody else's reviews to, to know what, what they have said about it. So I might be saying something totally contradictory to um, what someone else has said. But from my first impression, it, it looks pretty good. Um, the game over screen that I'm looking at right now, like it, it's a little gray. I mean, you kind of got this black box uh, around the, the thing. So, and again, you can, yeah, it's probably hard to see, but there's a little bit of light bleed here on the bottom. Um, but again, it's, I mean, that is really getting really nitpicky if, if you wanted to. Um, something else I'm, I'm looking at now that I'm noticing, um, it's interesting. So the buttons kind of have this concave, well, they are, they're concave buttons, which is what you'd find like on a normal, like American style cabinet. But then at the top, um, these buttons, um, the, the select buttons for the player start options, um, they're convex, so I'm sure that's done on purpose just to kind of style things. They're also obviously smaller than the, the ones below it, um, but that's, that's different. Uh, it's funny. Uh, the other thing I noticed, this is really getting uh, nitpicky with, uh, with things, but uh, Sabo's Arcades uh, and, and I were talking a little bit today. The font, I mean, all right, we're getting granular here, but the font on the control panel is off. Um, and he said it too. It's not just me saying that, but the font is is a little bit off on the top. It's not the same as what's on the original cabinet, but again, is that a big deal? Do people who, who you know, aren't really into Neo Geo, are they gonna recognize that or know that? Uh, probably not, but um, but I did notice it. Um, the, the font's a little bit taller than what it, than it would be on a standard. Uh, cabinet. Um, so what would my recommendation for the stick be? That's a, that's a really good question because these are smaller sticks and I don't know what the plate on the inside looks like. So I don't know, I don't know what our options are yet, like for switching these out. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we could really go to town and, and mod it and change all that out if we wanted to. But, um, until, until I, I really look at what is, on the inside for mounting options, I, I don't know what kind of stick I would I would recommend for this. Um, standard like, I guess thinking about Japanese like candy cabs, which reminds me of, of like these these smaller sticks. Um, you know, I, I always like the Seimitsu's. They're a little bit tighter. I don't know if that again. I don't know if that would fit in here or mount or not without looking at it. But like the LS56, that I mean, that'd be sweet if you could get something like that on here. And then um, for a change, you 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 actually wouldn't want to put well, maybe you would uh, a ball top on that. You'd probably want to stick with these um, bat tops that are more um, to the style of the the big red that this is modeled after. I would also um, I would also say um, something that's interesting that um, I noticed with the stick. Um, these things spin pretty easily. And I, I, this isn't, this isn't going to be all negative. I tr trust me. I just, just things I noticed as soon as I, I had it out, but these things, um, these things move pretty easily. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like rotating this around. Um, I'm not sure I really love that. And if I go counterclockwise, this just screws right off. 
um, with very little effort. So I don't know if that's because someone else had this apart, um, or, but you know, that I don't know that that's something most people are going to want to deal with. I mean, if it's a, again, it's a bar top. It's not a high end thing. But you can see it doesn't really go on the whole way. There's no stopping point. It goes on so far, and then it just goes right back. You know, counterclockwise. I, so, anyways, not. I don't know. It's probably not a big deal for most people. Um, you know, you're not going to be playing tournaments and stuff on this. But I, I, you know, it's. You, I don't know. Maybe like some type of like tape or I, something like double sided tape might help if you could get that on there. Or like if you've ever done grips on golf clubs, kind of um, put the alcohol on it, and then put that on, and then you you know let the alcohol dry as, as this is going on and then hopefully that would make it st i don't know you, you, you come up with your own ideas but these spin um a little bit too loosey-goosey for for my taste but again that's that's a solvable problem it's not a it's not a big deal um what else we got on here um we got this we talked a little bit about the sticks the buttons um the buttons yeah actually so that's another thing um so the stick you can kind of you can kind of hear probably on the, the mic will pick that up. Clicky, right? You want that. Those, those are the micro switches. Real, real clicky on the inside. The buttons, however, no. So that's interesting to me. Um, so there's no, I, you know, there's not a, a, a traditional like micro switch on, on these buttons. These are actually more, I guess, what you would think of like a Sanwa or Seimitsu button, although they're, um, you know, they're, they're concave. Uh, so they're not they're not clicking, uh, which you know again it's a it's an American style it's styled after the the big red so you know ideally you'd probably want some clicky buttons here to go with your clicky stick, but you got a little bit of a mashup you got the clicky stick and then you've got your more I don't want to say they're San or say Mitsu buttons but that's I, I suspect if we looked at the inside of this it's it's pretty much um, how those are are designed so maybe not the same quality but that you know that's that's how they're designed. Um, what sticks do I have in my big red? Sorry, I'm just trying to catch the chat. It's hard to talk, look, focus, read the chat. Um, I have the IL, the Industrious Lorenzo sticks in there. They're pretty much, they're pretty much the go-to um, stick these days for an American style stick. It's probably what most of you guys from North America remember on cabinets. Um, it's it, that's who used to manufacture those, and Hap does a. Hap does a pretty decent job of copying that, um, but it's it, their sticks more recently are not quite as good. And the, the micro switches that they're using have been outsourced to Mexico instead of like your cherry switches, those D44Xs. Um, so they're not quite they're 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 close, but they're not they're not as as good as the industrious Lorenzos, the ILs, in my opinion. Again, a lot of this stuff is personal preference. It's like what you like. Maybe you like a looser stick. Maybe you actually like the the micro switches that are <laughs> that are being made in Mexico. You know, like because they click a little bit easier um, versus the tighter feel. It's all personal preference, but that's what I use. That's what I like. I think if you talk to a lot of arcade people, they'd say, yeah, you just you just want to get the, the ILs. Just just grab those. There's not a big difference in price on those either. I mean, there's they're maybe like five bucks apart, like the haps versus the the ILs. So for five dollars, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get what I what I want. Um, let me see what else is on here. Can you reconfigure the buttons on these games? So yeah, so if you, that is another thing that, this is the option button, I'll hit that. Um, so uh, that takes you right into the settings. Obviously you got your save states here. It looks like there's four banks for save states. Uh, and then here you got the controller settings. Um, pretty much tapping the red button does most of this. Um, so I'll hit that. And then this little menu pops up at the bottom. And if you guys, have the arcade stick pro it's basically the exact same thing so it's saying to press whatever button i want to have as a you can see the color layout here matches what's on the control panel but like if you know i don't know for whatever reason i wanted to make yellow a i could do that i can hit that as a you see it, it turned um and then b c and then i don't know we'll say d's down here in the center button so you can do that if you want um 
You can save, cancel, go back here to restore the default because I don't really want to play like that. Um, while we're in here, um, again, I, I'm sure you guys have all seen this before because I just haven't been watching the video, so this is all new to me. Um, you got your, your different types of uh, settings for your uh, scan lines for your picture. I'm on pixel scaling, which is pretty much sharp pixels, uh, which again, the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro outputs. Um, scan lines, I, I did have these enabled here. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and do that and then we'll um, save and jump back. I actually thought, I'm not a big fan of artificial scan lines. It, it doesn't look bad on here, in my opinion. I thought the artificial scan lines look, look pretty decent. Maybe it's because the, the screen's a little bit smaller versus, you know, if you have the artificial scan, uh, scan lines um, on a, a big screen, like if you're doing that on uh, your, your TV at home and you're looking at like a 50 inch set or you know 60 or 65 whatever it is you have and you got this big picture and you got these big black lines across it whereas i don't know it looks better here to me anyway than um what i've seen like from the arcade stick pro on my bigger television upstairs so again it, it, it could just be a size thing but I, I might actually this might be one of those rare occasions where i might actually just leave it on um that might be my, my default. Normally I'm sharp pixels, but um, jump back here. There's Then there's some other weird stuff on here too. Um, smooth scaling. I'm gonna guess that that's that bilinear filter that um, we've seen, like, yeah, where everything's, see, that looks gross to me. That looks like you've got some kind of like, um, I don't know, grease smeared on the, the lens or something. I, I don't know, it's, it, I, don't, I don't like that look at all. I know some people do. Um, what else is in here? There's some, uh, there's some weird settings too, just like on the Arcade Stick Pro. So hor horizontal scanning line, I'm guessing what, that's what that is. Here's vertical scanning lines and 40 degree. Um, that's an odd um, angle to pick. So uh, hor I wonder how horizontal scan lines look like and how that differs from normal scan lines because normal, no, well, that, that is interesting. So they are horizontal, but it's different from the other scan lines that we that we had up. So let me see if we can get some. So I'll I'll try to grab better video. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know if I like that. There's a weird um, there's a weird effect when it scrolls too with this. So um, I'll try to get a better video of the differences between the well, what's that called? That's the horizontal scan, which almost sounds re redundant. But then there's pixel scan lines. So um, I'll try to get a decent video capture of that for when I do a, an actual real video. Um, how's the lag compared to a CRT? Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything um, to, you know, anything good to measure that with. I mean, Shock, Shock Troopers was okay. Like I didn't really, I didn't, it didn't seem terrible. It's definitely, it's definitely different though. Um, let me see if I can exit out of here. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to see if there's something that I'm like, like obviously like Metal Slug, I'm, I'm, I know that like super well, like how that feels. I'm just jumping through games here. That's a, that's a, a little annoyance too that I've noticed. Again, this isn't gonna be all negative. You get to the end of the games, and instead of, if you're clicking right, instead of going back to the beginning, like if you want to go back to like the King of Fighters games, you got to go, you got to go all the way back. It doesn't, it doesn't loop, which is, I mean, that's a minor complaint, but that is kind of annoying. I don't know if that'll be fixed with a software update or not. So like, so like I got to go all the way back now if I want to go to King of Fighters. Um, starting to lose train of thought here because we were talking about Metal Slug and, and the lag. But um, yeah, I mean, I played a little bit. Actually, I loaded up Metal Slug 2 because I wanted to see if the slowdown was present. And it and it is. Um, and which is good. You want that slowdown, right? Because that's in the original. And it, it feels okay. I mean, I definitely know that I'm playing... I, I don't want to sound like, you know, some type of elitist, but I definitely know I'm playing on 
something that's emulated and is on an LCD screen. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I I can I can tell um, you know that, that that there's something a little a little bit different, and and that's going to be the case. Like that's always going to be the case with with emulation. I mean, I know you got the whole run ahead thing, right? That you can do with um, some some beefier setups. I don't know what the hardware looks like inside of here, and some of that can be mitigated. But then you know it's going out to a digital display and and whatnot. But I, I can definitely tell it's a it's it's just a little different. It just it just is. Um, the other thing. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to. There we go. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, there, and, it, and it's probably really hard to see, and I'll have to show this on a video. Left player start. You've got um, you got like this little LED here. Right player start, and on a real cabinet, those numbers show you. Uh, they show you the number of credits that you have in, and on here, I was like, what's going on? Like I was because I loaded up a game, was playing it, and like these numbers were different, and like I didn't. I think I just put like one credit in to play the game and I had like numbers on both sides. I'm like, what, what is this? So uh, I was playing with it a little bit during um, uh, my, my lunch break today and just kind of like, like what, what's going on? So I'm noticing, and it's probably really hard to see. So right now the left player LED says one, but over here it says six. And so like what, like what the hell does that mean? So if I go here, it goes to two, three, four, five, and then uh, Samurai Showdown five special. This goes to six. So what it's actually doing is it's telling you in the Samurai Showdown collection that um, there are six games, right? So I'm on six of six. I I I don't know why that that's the format for that. It's not a pro or a con. It's just it's just kind of strange. So now I'm on the classic collection. Uh, left player LED says one, right player start says nine because you've got you know nine games in this collection. So I'm on one of nine. I'm sure if there was instructions with this, it would probably tell you that. I don't really know that it matters, but again, I, I didn't understand it when I first looked at it, like what was going on, but that seems to be the logic behind it. So then you jump to sports classic, yep. So this goes to five, we got five games here. I'm on Super Sidekick, so so that's that's a one. Um, you see what here? Uh, the NDA, who everybody who signed, I didn't sign anything. Uh, I, I don't know if that's good or bad. I got virtually no instructions with this, so um, they asked if I wanted to see it, and I said yes. It was like a two sentence email, and and um, here it is. It's at my door. So I didn't I didn't sign anything. Um, I'm not going to go ripping the thing apart. I, actually, I don't want to break it because <laughs> I, I don't get to keep this. I'm, I'm going to have to send this on to the next person. So the last thing I want to do is be responsible for breaking it or having something pop or crack on my watch. And uh, yeah, so I'm probably not going to open it up, but I do, I really want to know, um, I want to look at the buttons and the stick. So if there's I think um, Sabo's Arcade was saying there's really not an easy way to, he's like, you pretty much are going to have to take the whole thing apart if you want to look at it, which I, I don't really want to do, but I don't know, we'll see. Who knows? Who knows how crazy things will get this weekend? Yeah, Andre's saying the numbers are kind of useless. Yeah, I don't, I don't, they don't really serve any purpose. I will say, um, I think you're, he's talking about the LEDs. I think, at least from my my standpoint, like it's cool that those are on there, like as a nod to the original cabinet. Like I really like that. Um, so it's like, well, at least make them functional, make them make them do something, um, you know. So let's load up, uh, let's load up football frenzy. We'll see. Uh, so the scan lines are still on. You guys can kind of maybe see that kind of sort of. I know the glare is probably really bad too. I had a hard time figuring out how to set this up. Yeah, these are really ugly. There's a really weird like scrolling like parallax almost effect with with whatever the type of um, scan line we, we left that set on. I think that might be the, the horizontal. Yeah, it's on the horizontal ones. The, the pixel scan lines, again, like that, those are good. Like those actually look pretty decent. Yeah, that's way sharper and it, it looks normal to me. I don't know what's going on with the other, but 
I'm sure there's probably a tech explanation for that. Yeah, Gecko says he wishes Top Hunter was on this. I I love Top Hunter too. Like, and it also gives a little bit of variety to um, the game lineup because there's a lot of fighting games on this. I want to say I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think there's at least 30, 32 maybe um, fighting games. Which I mean, I look. I know SNK's like that's their thing. Like a lot of people know them for those fighting games, but um, that's actually not. Again, me personally, that's not what attracted me to the Neo Geo. It's not. I didn't play fighting. The first time I played it, I played um, Magician Lord, which I think a lot of people probably did. Um, and then um, you know, Nom Seventy Five was another one. So all those like typical arcade style things of the early '90s. It wasn't until later in Street Fighter, right, that comes out, and then everybody's going to do that. And and don't get me wrong, there's some great fighting games on, obviously on on the Neo Geo. Um, but sometimes I feel like you know it's a it's a it's a bit much sometimes going through um, all the Fatal Furies, every King of Fighter for every year. Like I, it's cool that they're on here. Again, don't get me wrong, I prefer them include those. But um, it would have been nice to see. I mean, shooters too. Like I, we don't really have any shooters on this, and SNK. Um, there's a couple of decent shooters. I think I mentioned in the video I did the preliminary for this. That, um, that they own, so I don't know why they couldn't have licensed them and given a little bit of variety here, but yeah, you know. Hey, Andy, thanks, man. I appreciate the, the five bucks here. That's, that's really, that is really nice. That goes into the Mr. Jamma fund for everybody who's um, paying attention when I've um, uh, streamed before. Yeah, Neo Turf Masters is another, is another miss. I mean, there's top uh, players golf on here, which is... Um, <laughs> I always joke, it's like, yeah, it's the second best golf game on the Neo Geo. But yeah, Turf Masters, I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen that. And then you've got Windjammers, which I think is always a, a tough one because there's so many things going on with that right now. Um, with the limited run games releasing that, you've had um, some other uh, installments of that released for, for modern hardware. It's in a lot of eShops, and then you have the Windjammers 2. Uh, I don't even know what the latest is on that, I, now that we're talking about that. But Windjammers 2 coming out, I guess, at some point. Maybe it's already out and I missed it. I don't know. Um, so that might be a little bit more difficult of a property. So that one I don't necessarily fault them on because I'm sure there's some licensing stuff with that. But, um, yeah, some of the, the SNK stuff that they own and – you know, I, I don't know. Maybe SNK didn't want to give it to them. Who who knows? Ah, Zabo's Arcades. There he is. He's in the chat, everyone. So if you're interested in uh, this Ronald McDonald themed marquee for your MVSX, you got to hit up Zabo's Arcade. When I do the actual video, I'll put a link for that in in the description. So. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, last resort. That's a, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely check out Zabo's arcades for, for, um, the custom Ronald marquee that you're seeing on here. Um, what else we had? Polestar. Yeah. Polestar. Uh, it's a, um, I don't know that that's necessary. That, that's not a, an SNK property. I don't think, um, last resort is, um, Zohar, thanks, man. Uh, I really appreciate the uh, the donation tonight. Thanks, appreciate that. Any thoughts on collabs with Retro Ralph in the future? Uh, I don't know if he's still in the chat or not. He stopped by earlier, um, so I mean, I I always say I'm I'm happy to do something for anyone's channel for the most part, provided they come with an idea or they have a they have an idea and and you know know what they want to do. Um, Sometimes you, you know, I, I don't, I just flat out don't have time. I was mentioning earlier, uh, putting YouTube videos together has been really hard. Um, and you know, and, uh, just personal life and, and work and whatnot. And so, um, that always depends on, on my, you know, how much availability I have, but yeah, I like retro Ralph. Um, he, he texted me a little bit today before, um, I set everything up here tonight and, um, well, you know, he and I will, will chat here and there, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any problems doing, uh, collaborations with, with people provided it, it makes sense and we both have time. 
Uh, Deep Green is asking, should I buy this or a JNX consolized MVS on eBay for 850? Wow, that's how much those JNXs are going for. So, I, I, look, I don't want to take time away for, or um, time. Uh, I don't want to take sales away from James, but uh, James isn't really doing the the JNX consoles right now. He he has a pause on those. Um, but I don't know. There's a couple other options that are have surfaced more recently for consoleized mvs uh there's the ultra cmvs you should google that i think retro rgb has an article up on his, his website i don't know how much that thing costs um but the ultra cmvs is is an option that's going to be produced i don't know maybe they already are and there's actually another console that uh, similar to james it's like a one-man operation and uh on the neo geo for life group on facebook uh, i i want to say he's selling them for 280 shipped and they're kind they're hand assembled the people who have gotten those consoles so far that have commented on um you know the quality and and they everybody seems to like them they're happy again it's early i i I haven't looked at one i haven't held one haven't seen pictures of like the insides um i'm assuming if you're (laughs) i'm assuming if you're you're selling those especially to a very um picky group of people uh in that in that group on facebook that you know what you're doing and that the, the craftsmanship is there the consoles look nice, so I would definitely check out Neo Geo for Life, and um, I, I, his name is, is escaping me, unfortunately, and I, um, I'm actually using my phone right now, too, so um, I can't look it up. But check that out, and then also um, the Ultra CMVS on um, Retro RGB. There's an article about those. So before you spend 850 just know your options. Um, the... Uh, the consoleized MVS, I mean, obviously, it, I, I think it's hard because I, I think I've gotten a lot of questions about that, about should I buy this? Should I buy the Arcade Stick Pro? Maybe I want to get an MVS. Maybe I'll just get an AES and the Neo SD. I mean, I could really, and I probably should at some point, just look and put a video together on all these different options. I think you probably want different things out of it and knowing what it is you want ultimately like do you want to collect carts if you do then maybe start on you know an mvs collection and and you're going to go that route if you just want to play the games uh and you don't really care about collecting carts or getting involved in that or you know old hardware scalers um you know component video like here just have this right like you can just have at it and, and play the games that are on here um but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little different. So it's it's always it's always hard uh, to, to you know for for what um, everybody's everybody's things are gonna be different. The things that they want out of something, they're always gonna be vary a little bit from your own. Retro Ralph, he is still here in the conversation. Um, he's thinking about attempting to bid on a Neo Geo Mini cab this weekend. Uh, what those would sell for, I guess I could ask offline, but it kind of fits with the conversation. So when you say the Mini cab, are you talking about the Cabaret, like the um, the actual SNK, like the that has? I think it has like a. I want to say it has like a 13 inch monitor in it. Maybe is that, is that what you're actually talking about? Or are you talking about like a MVS like a Neo 29 like candy cab. I'm not I'm not 100 percent certain. Yeah, Andy just said um, yeah he's calling out the CMVS. It's that I was just talking about. It, the, that's the Ultra um, CMVS. Oh man, um, yeah the the Omega is is definitely still an option as well. And I know that there's uh, the Omega MVS for um, for Neo Geo uh, sold by Arcade Works. I didn't have great luck with mine, um, but I know that uh, I will say they they repaired it and took care of it when it it did break. Um, And I know that there's actually a board out for that now that improves the video quality out of the Omega, but I think it limits you to component video only. I didn't really answer Retro Ralph's question either, did I? Yeah, the SNK, the the mini with the 13-inch monitor. I I don't know uh, about that, honestly, Ralph. Is, is, is like what the cost of like what I would pay for that? Again, you seem to live in an area where 
cabinets pop up a lot more frequently than they do here in <laughs> South Central Pennsylvania. But um, I want to say some time ago, this is probably two or three years ago, there was one on eBay that looked pretty decent. And I think it was sitting at like 600 bucks, which is, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, obviously, if you're not local, you're going to have to pay to get that shipped then. So that's additional cost. But again, that's like, what did I say, two, three years ago. And you guys all know like what happens to prices in retro gaming and two or three years can be, um, you know, a lifetime for, um, you know, the value of something. So I, it, I'm sure that that probably has gone up and that's probably not a realistic price to think you're going to get that for 600 bucks at this point. But may, I don't know, maybe if you find the right person. Hey, Dave. Yeah, Super Dimensional calling out the, the Mr. Project as well. So, um, you know, FPGA and, you know, you, that's, a, that's quite a, an investment as well. And there's some setup to the Mr. But it's, you know, it's another way to go. Hardware emulation, get access to all of the Neo Geo games. You got your HDMI out, so you don't have to worry about the scaler. So that's definitely another way to go. It's a little pricey. So, you know, the, the ticket to ride there is going to cost you. But you get more than just Neo Geo too. You're getting all those different arcade cores, and um, you know I haven't, I don't have a Mister, so I don't, you know, I kind of see things that people post from time to time. I, I, I know I think like Turbo Graphics is out for that, and I want to say like NES and and some, you know, you got your consoles and stuff showing up on it too. So it's definitely a, a decent device, you know, if you're you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, so if you're in if you're in Southern California, yeah, arcades every five feet, yeah, um, yeah. So I'm sure, like, if you're looking at that time period when you had all of those arcades out there, um, you know, the the stock is probably a little bit more. Even you know, 20 years later, those cabs are still circulating out there, and you still, um, you know, presumably have access to some of that stuff that hasn't been destroyed. Um, so let me see what else. Um, I, I didn't really mention there's on the far right here, you got this uh, this dial and this this kind of adjusts the volume. This would probably be too loud for the microphone, but you can probably hear it. There's that classic sound. So that's kind of nice. There's an easy way to just adjust the volume. I did see somebody asked about um, the speakers on here. Um, they, you know, it's not... <sighs> They're not terrible, but they, they're, they're small, right? So these are really small speakers. Um, you can kind of see you got, you got left and right here. Um, I would say, I mean, and this is no surprise to anybody, there's, there's, there's like zero bass. Like, so you're not, and I'm not talking like I want the, the house to thump or anything like that, or, but um, they, they're very high on the treble. And again, they're tiny speakers, so you can't expect much but they do seem maybe just a little tinny. Again, they're not bad. I, I mean, I'd still give them like a B, right? But um, yeah, they're not, they're, they're not too bad. So I'm just trying to take a peek here. Let's see what else we got on here. Um, yeah, I mean the game selection. Oh, here's the options and stuff at the top. Let's just see what's this here. So that was one of the things. This is like your kind of like your copyright. Um, uh, again, I'm just clicking on things because I'm I'm curious. And it does say this product is licensed by SNK and, and protected by copyright. So that was kind of like the big sticking point for me early on. Um, I was I really wanted to know that. Like I really is this in fact licensed by SNK? Because if it's not, I mean, there's a number of different bar tops and stuff out there, right? That you can you can buy that um, that aren't licensed and, and so um, that that means something I think um, at least to me anyway that you're getting some type of product that's endorsed by SNK for you know for whatever that's worth I know some people still are like oh, SNK will they'll give their license to anything for money at this point and I don't know maybe that's true but we have seen new games so just keep that in mind and regardless of what you think of them new Samurai Showdown presumably a new Metal Slug on the way we had the um, SNK uh, heroines, which I know it's not, it's not a great game, right? But at least you're getting new stuff. Uh, here's a settings. 
menu. Oh boy. So there's, this is again, very similar to the arcade stick pro language options down the right. Um, game mode. Uh, somebody asked me that, uh, I think on YouTube, that might've been, um, that might've been Chris. Uh, so here's where you set MVS versus AES mode. Uh, MVS mode, obviously your, your arcade style, you, you know, and that's probably what you want for most games. The only time you might switch that up is maybe for like uh, baseball stars professionals on here. You don't want to have to keep entering coins. You know, you get that timer ticking down. You just play the console version. And then what else we got? Uh, so the game image. So you can, this is probably like a master setting for the rest of the device. I mean, you can, it looks like you can set it by game, but um, so game image, pixel scan line, and then system, um, you know, as you might expect, version 1.0. But that's really all there is in, in the settings. And then we're just down here going back through uh, games. This is kind of what I was saying about the Fatal, uh, about fighting games. And then here's like the Fatal Fury collection. And you got eight of them showing up on the right-hand side. And you're on, on number one. So you got, I mean, you, you got a healthy selection of fighting games. I'm hoping with the, there is a USB port on the back of this. So I'm hoping with that option, you know, you're, um, somebody called out in the other video. Let me go back here. So the name of this collection is the classic collection. You notice it's that volume one. So are they going to do other volumes? Are you going to be able to buy? Maybe you'll, you'll get like volume two and maybe that'll be some of the shooters and stuff that, you know, we're talking about that we want. I, I don't know. Um, but there's a USB port on the back, presumably for system updates, as well as uh, maybe buying more games. And then the question that everybody always has, I mean, this thing hasn't even like hit, uh, you know, doorstop or doorsteps of, of the, you know, the, the average consumer, but um, can you hack it? Like, you know, it's not even in people's hands yet. And people are already asking that. And, you know, and I understand that, I guess, you know, if you're buying something for 500 bucks and, um, you know, you want to get the most out of it. So I don't want to just be locked to these games that they decided they're putting on here. So, yeah. Um, nope. Uh, a 10 pilots asking if pole stars on here, pole stars, not on here. There's no shooters on here. Here we are too, at the end of, uh, the World Heroes and Art of Fighting collection, and like I, I can't go back to the beginning. I gotta, it's, it's <laughs> so now if I want to go back, I gotta, I gotta scroll all the way back. I, I, I don't know why that this, that that bugs me. Um, where's Metal Slug at? Let's let's put Metal Slug on here. Like at least get that a track mode running. How about Metal Slug Three? Everybody likes Metal Slug Three. There it is. Um, I was curious too. I know this is kind of nerdy. I was wondering like how this was lit at the top. It's actually a very, um, you know, I, I, cause I look at the marquees on, on actual arcades a lot and I, you know, I'm often looking at, you know, if they're burned out or replacing them with, uh, an led tube. I was, I was kind of curious what that looked like on the inside. Um, oh, sold for sale. Thanks, man. I really, uh, I really appreciate, uh, the donation. That's awesome goes right into the Mr. Jamma fund that we were just talking about. Um, so you said you may have missed it, but address the coin door. Yeah, so um, it's probably, let me move my water here. I don't wanna move the camera because I'm afraid I'll screw up what, I, what I've got going here. Um, I can probably lean this back a little bit. If I drop it, don't, uh, don't tell anybody I, I broke it. Um, you can kind of see in the bottom, there's, there's these, this fake like, coin door indentation i i don't i don't know like it's i'm not a big fan of it myself i don't it doesn't really serve a purpose i get why it's there the nod um but it's weird because i think the riser for this thing also has like the coin door like where it's supposed to be so i guess i don't know i mean it is I mean, I guess they're just trying to like dress up the the front of that a little bit, and you, you got the two speakers. I it, it's just not. I agree with you. It, I don't. I, I I don't. I don't really need it. It. I, I would have liked it better without. I think. Um, and if you got the riser, then the coin door is in the right spot. Um, and on that note, and we're looking at the front here. You've got these little holes drilled for the speaker. I I think you know for five hundred bucks. 
maybe just if you had decent speakers in this, it would have been nice to actually just have the grill instead of holes just drilled in the wood. Um, that would be my preference. But then again, does that look like what the original cab looked like? No. So they might be hiding, trying to hide that a little bit. My preference, I think I mentioned this before, would have been to put the speakers like up top, like underneath or um, maybe even, well, I don't know if you want to do that, but I would put the, I would have put them underneath the, the marquee. So you get the speakers like right at ear level and you know, on a, on a big red, like that's, you know, that's where they were. So I, I don't know. There's, I'm, I'm not an engineer, so, um, you know, they, I'm sure they did the best they could. Um, but yeah, the coin door. Yeah. I don't, I don't really like that down there either. Oh, no legend of success, Joe. Yeah. I mean, that's, everybody's missing out by not having legend of success, Joe on here. I, it's funny. I've been I've had this idea for doing um, like the worst Neo Geo games of all time, and and I want to do that video and put that out because there's there's some real slop. I mean, we talk about how much we like Neo Geo, or I do, anyways, and I know some of you guys do too, or you probably wouldn't watch the channel. But um, yeah, there's some really bad games too on Neo Geo. That that that's up there. That's that's maybe top three. Um, Power Spikes 2 is probably also my nemesis. It's just it's just such a shitty game. It's just it I've tried to like give it time and like maybe there's something deeper here. I, I just I despise and it and it it really underwhelms on what the Neo Geo is capable of from a hardware standpoint. It's just it's a terrible game. Um Legend of Success Joe also not not great at all. Would I recommend that people mod this with better parts based on what I've, I've seen? Yeah, I mean, if you came in late, I was kind of talking about the sticks a little bit. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. They, 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 you can kind of hear the click, and then it, the stick extends. And I, I think I talked about that a little bit with um, the actual Neo Geo Minis CD pads. Click, and then the stick extends farther. I don't, I don't really like that. Now, all sticks are going to bend a little bit beyond the, the micro switch click. But um, I think it's just probably it's probably not ideal that I played Shock Troopers first. Uh, but I mean, I'm always playing Metal Slug and you know some of these other games, Magician Lord. So it's like, oh, Shock Troopers. Let me let me try that out as the first game on here. And that's a that's a game like where you want that tight stick because you're you know you're using your hand to kind of like redirect the fire. And and this, it, you, if you have to keep doing that with a longer throw. It, it does throw off how you play the game. And yeah, I'm sure you could get used to it. I'm, I'm sure it's just retraining. And if, again, look, people buying this pro probably aren't playing with IL sticks at home right now, or maybe they are, I don't know. But it, even the AES stick, some of you guys probably use that for your, uh, your AES consoles or your consoleized MVS. This is more of a throw than even the stock stick in the AES. Yeah, that's a good comparison, uh, Super D. Uh, the urban champion of Neo Geo, uh, Legend of Success Joe. I might, I might steal that. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, um, nice to acknowledge that not all Neo Geo games are great. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm under no, um, I, I'm not delusional. I, I'm well aware. Sometimes though, and I, and I, I do like playing bad games. It, it kind of it kind of reminds me of like Mystery Science Theater 3000, which I was always a fan of that when I was younger. Um, it's, it's just there's something fun about watching bad movies sometimes. Sometimes playing bad games and just, uh, you know, it, that there's something to that too. I, I usually don't last long doing that. Like maybe give it 45 minutes if I'm lucky, maybe a half hour. But yeah, there's something to that. And um, Power Spikes and Legend of Success Joe are good for a laugh every now and then and just recognizing like, wow, what a squandered opportunity this was. Yeah, it's funny. Um, you're mentioning that um, Power Spikes 2 getting a CD release. How's that arranged soundtrack for Power Spikes 2? Is it, is it awesome? Is the, is the audio score on the CD just amazing? Is, that, is it worth buying? 
I can't wait. I should go. I you know I'm obviously we can go download that stuff now. Maybe maybe I need to listen to it. It'll change my whole opinion of Power Spikes too once I play it on CD. V Liner, yeah, that's another one. Um, that's a cart I don't have. I mean, I, I wasn't gonna go out of my way to buy that. It's not like, you know, it's not one of the ones that I would consider part of the original, you know, Neo Geo official release. But yeah, V Liner, I think that you can play. That. I don't know if Chris is still in the chat. That that's loaded up on the Hilo hack, and you can play that on your Cade Stick Pro. It's probably, it's probably all you really need. Um, to, to experience that game. Don't go buy that cart. Oh, there's... Uh, ah, the chat's scrolling too fast. Um, Joe just said, the way the Light at Marquee is designed, it, it's not an option without doing some serious customizing. You'll get casted shadows from the speaker magnets. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of makes sense. Are you going to get a Neo Geo CD now that I completed the MVS collection? Um... No, <laughs> I, I'm done. Like I don't, I'm not buying more Neo Geo stuff. I don't, I actually do. So I, I had a, a top loader CD at one point um, and I had it, I had a switch on it that you could switch it back and forth between uh, Japanese or uh, US uh, regions, which was kind of nice. But uh, I just, uh, you know, when I started collecting the carts and I started getting more and more uh, MVS carts, then I just realized like, I don't really need to have both of these things. And I know, I know a lot of you guys do collect dual format. Um, I know, um, Paps, he's not in, I don't think he's in the channel, uh, right now chatting, but I know he collects MVS, AES. I don't think he has CDs, but yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, harm in doing that. I mean, if you love Neo Geo and you just, you're just collecting to collect, like, you know, certainly have at it, right? But um, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not going to go chasing down, um, you know, CDs and stuff. I, I have a, a handful of those still left that I, I've never sold. A couple of them are sealed, which I'm. I have that whole like, it, it's tough. Like, what do I do with this? It's sealed. I'm not going to play it, so I'm just keeping it sealed at this point. But um, you know, could I sell that and somebody collecting those? Maybe, um, but I just haven't gotten that far yet. And um, despite me saying like, I'm not gonna go collect CDs and stuff, it's always tough um, for me to let go of SNK and Neo Geo stuff that I have. Cause I don't, you know, I, I, I just like it too much. Whereas something like Nintendo and um, I'm not bashing Nintendo or Sega. I mean, I, I, I have consoles and games and stuff. I love on those formats. Um, but I'm, I, I don't have a, an issue letting that stuff go. Oh, Super D, thanks, man. I really appreciate uh, the donation. That's really awesome. And yes, that is going towards the Mr. Jamma project that uh, Porkchop Express is working on. Um, there's, a, there's a couple other really talented people that are in a Discord right now working on the... Um, which I'm adding nothing to. So um, again, I'm getting distracted here. Um, yeah, they're working on the JAMA um, extension for the Mister, so that you can pop that Mister right into your uh, arcade cabinet. And uh, some really talented people working on that. I, I, I stop in usually once a day to check the Discord, see see what they're up to. Usually, it's a bunch of stuff that um, I, I I will be no help whatsoever too, but it's fun watching them work on that and develop kind of behind the scenes. So that's coming. So um, for sure, I want to be ready when that comes out because I'd like to cover that and have that on the channel. Probably a lot of people have asked about the FPGA core for the Mister and how that compares. And I'm sure, I'll be honest, I, I'm sure based on what I've heard and, and the the work that has gone into that, it'll probably be pretty seamless and I probably won't be able to, to recognize a lot of differences, but that'll be cool because that'll be the first time I actually get to play that. I'll pop it into one of the arcade cabinets and, and give that a go. Um, oh, uh, bedroom Beethoven's. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I saw you asked me about, um, the Unico. That's actually, you're the first person that actually referenced that, that I've seen. Um, so Unico who made, uh, this, 
this cabinet. They've, they've also been responsible for some other uh, Neo Geo products uh, or SNK related products, I should say. They have a dual arcade stick coming out that has SNK games loaded onto it. And man, I want to say it's like a month and a half ago, they asked if I wanted to look at that and, and, and review it. And I was like, yeah, send it over. I'll take a look at it. And, you know, there's, I mean, people that watch this channel like Neo Geo games and um, a dual arcade stick would be really cool. So it's kind of like, if you think about it, it's just like the Neo Geo arcade stick pro, but two of them, right? Just put together. That's what it looks like. Um, but I haven't really heard a whole lot about it. And after I said I would look at it, they said, okay, well, once it, once it hits distribution in the U S to one of our warehouses, we'll get a copy out to you. But that was like a month, month and a half ago. So I don't know if they forgot about me. I don't know if it didn't ship. I didn't know, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, maybe shipping is delayed, who knows? But if I get it, I'll definitely show it on the channel. We'll talk about it. I can assume if it's made by Unico, the emulation, uh, I mean, it's going to, I would assume it's going to be the same as what we're seeing on like the arcade stick pro. And again, I, I haven't looked at the hardware for inside for this, but I'm assuming, um, it's similar. Um, I'm not going to say it's the same cause I don't, I don't know that, but, um, I, you could probably expect the same type of experience, which, you know, it's not bad. I, you know, I, I was concerned, you know, at one point and, and maybe I, because I know a lot of people were getting this unit to review and look at, and um, I was I was concerned that maybe people were holding off on, on, on asking me to look at it because I was critical of the Neo Geo Mini. But I feel like the the things that I mean I I kind of did that tongue in cheek review for the the Mini, and uh, you know I I feel like the things that I was critical of were were fair. It's certainly not a deal breaker. And again, that that thing dropped in price pretty significantly. I want to say those were like what forty bucks you could grab them for not too long ago. But when I got it and I I paid for it, I'm my nobody gave that to me. Um, when I when I bought the Neo Mini, it was like. A hundred, it was like a hundred dollars, and then it didn't come with a controller, so I had to buy the CD controller. So I'm in it for like what a hundred and thirty dollars for, you know, something I arguably don't really need, but I was interested in because it was a product and I wanted to kind of talk about on the channel. And then, you know, for a hundred and thirty dollars, I just expected, you know, I didn't expect clicky sticks, although that annoyed. But button mapping, I certainly expected to be able to do that. Now that has been fixed on machines like this. We're able to use the button mapping. We can do that on the Arcade Stick Pro. And then the video out on the Mini just being, you know, not, I, I don't like the blurry, like the greasy lens type thing. I don't like that. I know some people do, but at least just give us the option. Like, so that's the things that I was most critical of is not being able to button map, not being able to change the video output, things that were software fixes that I, I did, that was just perplexing to me that that would ship that way. And then, you know, when the Arcade Stick Pro came out, I think I looked at that a little bit more favorably. They corrected those things, um, you know, and, and the game selection was, was nice. Obviously, the Arcade Stick Pro gives you the better way of, from my, again, personal preference, the Arcade Stick Pro gives you the, the more genuine way of playing those games be, just because it's a stick and, it, and it's laid out the way, you know, the Arcade Stick was. And I thought that was a good experience. And... Um, Super D, um, I think if he's still in here, the 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 Arcade Stick Pro's stock controls are pretty good. Like I know I did the video on putting Seimitsu parts in it. You don't really have to do that. I mean that was kind of just an, a that was extra, right? I like Seimitsu parts. We were talking about the LS56 and um, using those sticks. I, I'm a big fan of those, and I was just like, well, look, this can this can be done, and I'm just gonna do it put new buttons on it and, you know, dress it up a little bit. And, but you don't have to out of the box, the arcade stick pro. And, and so I, to me, that's a better value because you're getting those software options to, to, to change your video output. You can map buttons. Um, you know, the game selection is pretty decent. Your controller is instantly better in my opinion than the CD controllers that came with the Neo mini. And so to me, for something that was the same price as the Neo Mini with controllers, that's a that's a better option in, in my opinion. So, but I was concerned that 
you know, people thought like, oh, well, he's just going to beat this thing up because it's emulation and he likes Neo Geo. And, and it's partially true. And, and we started off this stream by me um, nitpicking some of the things, like fonts, right? But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm calling that out. It, it's hard. It's always so hard uh, because, I, and this, this has happened, if I don't call something small like that out, then you get called a shill and you're just doing that because they gave it to you. And by the way, I'm, I'm not keeping this, right? Like this is, I have to send this back. This isn't like a free $500 item. But they, you know, people will say that, it, you know, you're, you're just doing it because, um, you know, you got it for free or whatever. But then if you do go hard and you do call those things out, then people are like, well, what do you want? Like, you're just an elitist. Like you just like playing on your, your real Neo Geo and, or whatever, you know? And it's like, what do you want? Like, what do you want me to say? Like, I can't, I, you're giving me no room here. So really that's, and, and I, going back to the beginning of this, that's why I didn't watch anybody else's reviews of this thing yet. I just want to look at it, play with it a little bit this weekend, collect thoughts and just put them out there. Like this is baseline, no preconceived notions about what other people have said. And um, so it'll be my genuine thoughts on things guys kind of got a sneak peek in some of the things that I, I like and I don't like already, but, um, it, it is a, it is a pretty sturdy unit. Like I have no, like at 29 pounds, you know, if you're playing a fighting game with a friend on here, I don't really have any concerns that you guys are going to like get too, well, I don't know all of you, but you're not going to get too wild that you guys are going to like knock this thing on the floor, you know, with, with two people just like really going at it. Um, because it is pretty sturdy. It's, it seems to be built well. I do like the screen. This whole sharp scan line um, thing really has impressed me. Um, you know, I, the, the non-clicky buttons are, you know, it's a, it's a minor complaint, I guess. The sticks really are the thing that I would say I'd be interested in, in switching out. I, I, I'm very curious to see what that looks like under the hood because... Um, I, I can see that being something that people are going to want to replace. One being this whole how easy it is to just kind of twist and, and move and, and spin this thing. Um, and then two, just the, the throw distance on these. So, um, but again, um, maybe not a big deal to some people and, and that's personal preference. Light up. He's in. You didn't get any alert. Eh, YouTube. Eh, that's, that sounds very like them uh does the ronald donald marquee come with the mvsx or is it a custom yeah so that's again that's from that's a custom from sabo's arcades uh, that he put together as a nod back to that mini cabaret from back in the day so if you're interested in that i don't i actually don't even know like what he's charging for for those but um, i'm sure they'll be up on his website if they're not already yeah, the AES ball, you're right. The AES ball is kind of um, easy to unscrew as well. Um, but yeah, for, I, I don't know. This was, again, it was it was apparent as soon as I, because it's not like a full stick, size stick, right? Like the it's a like a three-quarter bat top maybe. I That might be something I should do for the actual video is kind of um, measure these and measure them against like a, an actual stick. Um, I, I want to say these are probably like three quarter or half the size maybe. So you're kind of gripping it maybe a little bit differently. And it, and I, I did notice like it was, it was spinning and turning, but yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to get too hung up on it, but if I'm spending $500 on it, eh, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe that is something you're going to get hung up on. With the addition of uh, springs for the joystick, yeah, I mean, again, I don't know what's inside of this. I don't, I don't even know what kind of stick this is. Um, but yeah, certainly if there's parts available to to switch the springs out, you know, to adjust the tension and stuff inside, like, yeah, like I'm, I'm sure at some point someone's gonna tear this whole thing apart. Somebody like ETA Prime, um, we'll, we'll just have at it, and and then you know all secrets will be revealed. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. Um, this this is for someone who doesn't own a real cabinet, an AES or a consoleized MVS. I mean, I would agree with that. And then that goes back to when people are asking, like, 
should I buy this or should I buy a, a, an MVS? Should I buy an AES? Should I get the 160 in one cart? Maybe I want the Arcade Stick Pro. It, it's it's going to vary. Everybody's situation is going to be different. I would probably agree that this is probably something for somebody who maybe recalls the Neo Geo as something cool and, and that they like. They probably probably don't have like you know like you're saying like the the consoleized mvs or or the aes system it's like i just want this to sit on my bar like you know i just i just want this or on my desk you know um you know i and there's a obviously a number of different scenarios and stuff but at 500 dollars, yeah i am curious to see how well it sells like i i certainly hope it does well like i i do i want people to get get it and experience neo geo and play neo geo games and and and, and kind of relive that um but yeah five hundred dollars like how much do you love neo geo <laughs> and if you love neo geo at five hundred dollars you know i i suspect maybe you already would have invested or maybe you would have had you have something maybe and maybe it's like one of those things where um you're just getting back into things uh, meaning retro gaming and you're, you're, you know, you, you don't have any other options and you're looking at, um, you know, you, this comes along. It's like, Oh, I'm just going to get that and be done with it. That could certainly happen. I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to speculate who, who will get this and the, and the circumstances around it. And I think that could probably vary widely. You're thinking about selling some of your Neo Geo games to get this machine. That's interesting. So that's it. That, yeah, that's an interesting um, take too. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there's probably all different types of scenarios, wants, needs, things that you would prefer. Um, I mean, I could see the appeal of this. Like maybe, maybe there's games that you don't play a lot of, and it's like, hey, I can unload a few of those, and then having this, you know, either in my basement or on my bar or you know, wherever, that's cool to have. And it's a cool show piece. It's an accent piece for a room or whatever. My friends come over, they'll probably play that. Or, you know, maybe my kids will play it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, again, there's all different types of varying scenario. I, I just, I'm really curious to see how well this this does out of the gate. I, 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 I There's definitely a market for it, but who that is, I think is going to swing widely. G.I. Joe action figure. I have G.I. Joe action figures from, uh, I was actually just, I was talking to somebody on Twitter about that. I've got a bunch of action figures in the basement that I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're, they're good for, I, I, I can't part with them because I don't, I don't know why I can't part with them. I just can't bring myself to do it, but they they just sit in bins and they're every like three months or so I'll go down and go through the bins and kind of relive my childhood. Then they go back in the bins and back on a shelf. So I don't really know like what purpose they're serving, but um, I'm trying to think what all's down. I got He-Man down there, G.I. Joe, some Thundercats, um, Ghostbusters. I found some RoboCop figures too, which were really cool. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. I actually found the Indiana Jones truck too. Um, that was uh, that was pretty neat. And the the guy um, with the that has the um, the, the burned hand. He's got the medallion that burned in his hand. Uh, I've got that figure. He was in one of the boxes down there too. So yeah, good for going through every now and then and shoving back onto a shelf. Um, how does this compare to retro pie emulation? Yeah, that's a good question. And you know, it's always hard because I, you know, I, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time. My, my retro pie setup that I use is all like arcade games that I don't, play like in you know on on like actual hardware so i don't play a ton of neo geo on retro pie if i do it's usually for grabbing footage or something um and but then i'm always stuck when a situation like this presents and somebody asks me a question like that because i i'm i'm largely unfamiliar with you know how stuff like will run on the neo geo specifically will run on on the retro pie i probably sh that's probably a good homework exercise is to to play a little bit of that something i'm i'm pretty familiar with like uh like metal slug or um you know 
anything that's on here that I can then like magician lord, obviously, uh, that I can come I can come back to and then compare the two. So I actually appreciate you calling that out because I should probably try that. Oh man, deep green. You lost your your toys and stuff in a flood. I lost. Um, I lost some stuff. My mom's house got flooded a couple, well, at this point, it's more than a couple of years ago, but I lost a lot of stuff too. Um, I had my Atari 2600 in a box and I, I, I had all of that and that was gone. My, my 3DO box, a lot of obviously paper, cardboard stuff that I had, um, still had boxes for, got destroyed in that flood. Yeah, three quarters does seem to have a marketplace. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I obviously. I, I mean, I, I was a little skeptical of that at first, um, especially when I, I guess the thing that I was skeptical of was, is the gaming crowd going to spend hundreds of dollars on something three quarter size and that's it's emulation, and I, I I was very skeptical that that would be profitable. But obviously, I was wrong. Um, I just didn't see it happening. I didn't. I, I mean, you're talking about. We we're just talking about RetroPie. I mean, so many people seem to have that option, and it's relatively. I don't want to say it's free because it's not. I mean, you've got a, you know, the the price to entry on that is the hardware. But after that, you know, there's there's a whole you know world of ROMs and stuff that you can go out and load up, and it's all it, it's it's endless versus arcade one up and you've got three games and you've confined yourself to that again i i just i just didn't see it happening i just i you know for the average person but um they've done really well and and good for them and you know it's good that um you know the, the obviously the nba jam and turtles cabinets that came out four player like that's really cool you know people people are enjoying that um yeah it, they, they've done they've done great So how does this rank among uh, the SNK licensed products, in your opinion? Well, I can tell you I already like it more than the Neo Geo Mini, right? It's also $500, so it should be, it should be um, you know, pretty impressive for, for what it is. Um, it's only been a couple hours here that, that it's been in the house, so I, I'm hesitant to kind of give a, a, a grade on it when I really haven't played all that much on it or, or torn it apart. I mean, we looked at the options and some of the things that are on here, the sticks and the buttons and whatnot. But, um, I mean, I, I do like it. I think it's, I think it's cool. I, I would want to, <laughs> I would want to switch the buttons, I think, and the stick. Um, if it, if it were me, just again, personal preference, I'd want to try to find some, um, short stem buttons i'm guessing short stem maybe long stem buttons fit in here i don't that might be tough depending on where the speaker is but maybe short stem buttons would fit in here with a micro switch and um for the stick i'd want something shorter but um once you get that taken care of i mean you're you're in business this is a nice it's a nice showpiece for um like a room or you know whatever you have your friends over like i was saying get it out on the table or um, it's out on the desk, whatever. I mean, it's a, it's, it's fun. Oh, would I be purchasing this? That's funny. Uh, I probably not. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to spend $500 on this. I'm just, I, it's not something that, I mean, it's tough again. And we're back to personal circumstances, right? Um, there's a, there's a big red cabinet in my basement and I've, I've got a, a healthy collection of carts. So, I mean, it, it's hard because like the Arcade Stick Pro and something like that that's manufactured, like I would buy that. The Arcade Stick Pro I didn't have to buy because I, I was sent that. The Neo Mini I did just from a collecting standpoint. And so much like people collect Nintendo or collect Sega or that kind of stuff, all I'm interested in SNK products. This as a licensed SNK product, um, I'm a little less interested in it from a collecting standpoint. And at $500, I'm a lot less interested in it from a collecting standpoint because the need for the games and the ability to play the games, that's met for me. That's met for me elsewhere. 
Um, so I don't need, you know, I don't feel like I, I would want to spend the money to, to buy this for myself for a collection, but I'm also not getting the functionality out of it that somebody else would. So if you are looking to get back into Neo Geo or expand your Neo Geo collection without buying carts or, you know, you, you want like the showroom piece, right, that we, we were just talking about, this might be a good way to go. And maybe that $500 is, is worth it to you um, to, to buy. Um, so uh, for me personally, it's, it's probably a pass, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product, if that makes sense. Oh, that's cool, Deep Green. I, the the, um, the the nod to Osaka. Yeah, I I didn't I did not know that. That's always cool when people call that kind of stuff out. Healthy. You have every single MVS cart. You call it a healthy cart. I mean, yeah, it's pretty healthy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did I did just complete that. You're right. So I mean, I'm trying not to. I'm trying like I'm not I'm not looking to like brag about that. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody do that to be honest. <laughs> If the price drops in the future, it might be worth it. Yeah, I, I do. You're, that's a, that's an interesting too. Like you, you know, you see those clear out on um, clearances on uh, the arcade one up cabinets at Walmart. I I don't know though. You guys might know more about this than I do as far as marketing. Like I I think somebody said this is on Amazon, so you can buy this on Amazon. I don't know if this is going to hit a Walmart or a GameStop or I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but if they do, then yeah, I could see like a retailer like that, maybe knocking the price down on, on these. And, you know, maybe it's, you know, three ninety nine or, you know, hits, you know, below that, who knows, three forty nine. at that point, it, you're right. There's a, there's a cutoff where it does start becoming a little bit more interesting. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't I I don't know what it would take. I don't know what kind of price it would take for me to get interested in in picking this up. Um, but again, it's not it's not really for me. I don't think it's um, and again not that it's a bad product, but um, different set of circumstances for people. Yeah, um, the price drops. Yeah, fifty bucks. I I remember. I actually it was about a year ago. I think I posted it on Twitter. I was in I was in Delaware for Halloween, and we were just hitting actually like Walmart because you know you you raid a Walmart for Halloween costume supplies and stuff Halloween weekend. But there was a I I want to say it was the was it the centipede cabinet? And I think it, I want to say it was like seventy five bucks. But yeah, I saw people were getting like fifty bucks you know for for some of those things. It's crazy. Yeah, the Neo Mini, like I know that was like really cheap at one point. That was what, like, I, I want to say it was like forty dollars pretty recently. The hard thing about the Neo Mini is that I think it's it sucks that you you have to buy it. It doesn't come with a controller, so you spend forty dollars and then it's like you got to turn around. And I don't know what the controllers go for now. Maybe fifteen, maybe twenty. I, I'm not I'm not really sure. Yeah, Street Fighter 2 arcade one up for $75. That's definitely worth it. Like I would say that that's that's totally worth it at that point. Um for modding, again, uh Zabo's arcades, if you wanted to like change up the artwork on it, um not so not just modding like the internal hardware, but you could, you know, redress the the outside with some of his artwork and uh yeah, you got that six button control panel layout on the arcade one up for, for the Street Fighter 2 arcade one up which is really nice for a, a lot of games. Like obviously like this is, this is the six button layout for each player. Um, you know, I speculated, I, I wondered what these other two buttons would be for uh, maybe, you know, adding other games and, and maybe this, again, this could be hacked and then you, then you can play your street fighter on here and you've got your layout. But as of now you can do just for button mapping, but yeah, that for sure that street fighter two arcade one up cabinet at 75 bucks, with six buttons on e for either player, you can mod and do whatever you want with that. Maybe you already did. Yeah, Space Invaders for 75 bucks. Yeah, for sure. 
As an MVS enthusiast, what are your opinions and impressions of the Neo Geo CD and how do you feel about collecting for the system? So we talked about that a little bit earlier. I, I had a top loader CD that was pretty cool. I, I always liked that CDZ, that, that model, which was uh, Japanese only. Uh, I was always very curious about that because I wanted to just kind of see the load times for myself. I know there's videos online and, and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I was always curious about about uh, playing games on that and just kind of seeing if, if they were you know dramatically improved or not. I had the top loader for uh, the majority of the games that I like to play on on Neo Geo and the Neo Geo CD. It was it was okay. Like I thought the load times were fine. I loaded last. Blade two up on it once and like it was I, I thought that was laughable like it it just loads like every chance you think you're gonna play and then it loads again and then you know between rounds it's gonna load again and it's just it was crazy the amount of loading that that thing did for for some of those higher end you know later in life type titles but that's to be expected I guess on on that type of hardware I think it's nice that the Neo Geo CD has the um, SD loader now so. You could get that for it and then just load all the games up. Uh, I've heard that that dramatically improves some of the loading times on, on the Neo CD. And if you still want to collect the CD games, you know, as the discs, you could still collect those and, and have the originals if, you know, nothing says you can't. I mean, people who have, I know, I know there's probably people in this chat right now who have a Neo SD and are still collecting the original carts from time to time. So, um, I don't know, that might be a good way to go. Are there benefits financially to buying AES MVS games on the CD instead? I mean, for sure. There's um, a lot of the titles are cheaper on on CD, and I, you know, it, there's I'm not an expert on the, the the Neo Geo CD. I know that a lot of the games obviously have arranged soundtracks, and so that the audio scores are a little bit better um, in some cases, right? They're they're better and crisp and. Um, you know, they've been remastered or whatever for, it's not like, you know, it's not like the kind of, the, ty the kind of audio you would get off of a cartridge. Um, but then there's also drawbacks. I know sometimes, uh, you know, people talk about animation frames are, are missing on some of the games too. So it's a give and take with some of the stuff. I actually really like, um, you know, we were talking about Polestar in, in this chat, uh, a few times now. That's one of my favorite games on Neo Geo and I think that the audio tracks on the CD are are awesome. Like the CD version of Polestar has has a really cool soundtrack to it. It's it's, it's different if you listen to it. Um, I did buy the uh, actual soundtrack for that when that came out not too long ago too, because I, I just I just really like that game. So there's definitely you're asking about finances for sure. I mean I mean there's for sure advantage i mean aes is is really expensive i i mean i without without looking i would i would be willing to risk that the cd versions of aes games are, are almost always going to be cheaper and there might be an exception for that for like maybe a magician lord or something like that might be close because there's so many copies of that floating around um but yeah the, the definitely cds are definitely cheaper Hey, Deep Green, thanks for stopping by, man. Um, let's see what else we got here. What's my favorite Neo game? Uh, or King of Fighters Neo game. Um, I I like... Um, <laughs> I don't know if this counts. I, I definitely like um, 2003. And I know everybody goes 2002. Everybody talks about 2002. I don't know why. I'm not a big fighting game fan in general. And I play very little of the fighting games on Neo Geo. When I do, it's usually it's usually Mark of the Wolves. I do like um, I do like uh, Rage of the Dragons, which I know a lot of people don't. Um, so I play a lot of that. Real Bout, Fatal Fury Two, I play. Uh, King of Fighters ninety eight. I'll spin that up every now and then and and have a go at that. But um, that's usually those are usually the ones I. I I play the most when I am playing fighting games. 
Oh, that's cool, Neo. So you are actually, I didn't realize that. So uh, Neo, uh, you, uh, Severa, you are, uh, Chris, uh, you are actually going to be getting this. That's really cool. I'm glad that, uh, that, that so there, we got somebody in the channel that is, is picking this up. Um, what else we got in here? Um, what does the future of the arcade multi-cart setups look like? Um, can we envision STV multi-carts? So there is an STV multi-cart out. I just did a video on that. Um, that's been out for a while, I think. That's uh, The STV multi-cart came out, I want to say like 2016, maybe. It's one of the older ones that Darksoft did. Um, and then you're talking about, are they essentially better than Pandora's boxes for your arcade? Yeah, I mean, it, you're talking about running things on original hardware versus emulation. So like a Pandora's box is, you know, I, th I, th I think is basically running like Final Burn Alpha, Final Burn Neo, I guess now, but um, that's what they used to run. So you're, you're just running emulation and there's a bunch of conversions going on to get that, you know, to the JAMA edge and then plug it into your cabinet. So, I, I mean, it's probably not a, a terrible experience and gives you a, a good way of playing a lot of games, but if you want to hook up to original hardware, um, yeah, I mean, definitely the STV multi-card's great. Uh, I've got that. I got picked that up like last month and have been playing um, some some games on that. Um, the future of multi-cards is interesting that you, you mentioned that, though, because I've wondered about that myself. Um, you get to a point where, you know, it'll all, there will always be people that, you know, that are into that kind of thing, um, myself included, from a hardware standpoint. Some of those things, like the STV cart plugs right in to the STV motherboard, and you're, away you go. It's, there's nothing really, you know, that you have to do. You get into something like the CPS2 multi, and now you're talking about, like, taking apart a B board and mounting this additional PCB onto the B board, taking the ROM chips off, and you've got some, you got some work to do, some soldering. In the past, that actually would kill boards because you'd have to take the battery off of it and the thing would suicide, and now you can restore those and it's not as big of a deal. But um, I guess the question is, what I'm coming around to, with that CPS2 multi and there's that additional work involved, and then there's like reverse engineering for all these other systems that you want to you want to play and create multis for well the the mr fpga is just kind of looming there and you've got guys working on the jama adapter for the mr so at this point it's like well where does it where does it uh you start drawing those lines right because do you are you going to invest all this time and effort and research into this niche multi-cart product for you know, whatever system it is you're working on. Or here's the core. Somebody already created the core for the Mister, and there's a JAMA edge, and you just plug it in and go. Now, granted, the Mister is, it's hardware, it's hardware emulation, and I know we could probably get into a, a battle on here um, if we wanted to, uh, to get into it on about what that means and whatnot, but it's, it's a pretty pure experience provided the core has been handled by a programmer that knows what they're doing. So you're getting a, you're getting a, a pretty decent experience out of that. So it all comes down to, I, I wonder about the future of multi-carts as well. Like where, where's that cutoff, par, uh, that cutoff point where it's worth it for, for dark software, those guys to kind of go through and, and work on that, sell a niche product for, you're usually expensive because the time, the effort, sourcing parts, um, you know, building those, custom PCBs and then you're selling it to a pretty niche group of people versus you buy the mister and you got that JAMA edge when it finally works, right? There's that's still being worked on and the cores just start going. You've, you've got one device and all, all you need is the cores for that. So I, I do wonder about that. It's a, it's a good topic, I think, because I, I could see myself leaning more towards the, the mister for, for certain things that are a little bit more niche where I'm maybe not overly invested. But if I already have the mister, I already have that JAMA edge adapter for for the mister, then I'm just going to use that and probably not waste time hunting down original boards and, and whatnot. So I do see uh, what we have here. Oh, um, Soul for Sale. Thank you so much. Speaking of the mister, donating to the JAMA mister fund. 
Are the differences between the AES and MVS versions significant? Um, how many have different versions on this bar top? So I, I think, I, I don't want to speak too soon. I'll go back here quick. I think you can, I think every game on here, you can play the AES or the MVS version of, and that's configured if you go up here. Again, it's probably hard to see, but up at the top, there's settings. You go in there and then game mode. Right now, it's set the MVS. I'll, I'll change it to uh, AES and then go back. And so what I think you'll see for the most part um, for, well, maybe we'll just jump back into um, Sengoku since we're already there. Um, but I think what you're going to see, it's just the console version, right, of, of these games. So instead of having to coin up, um, you'll get a finite amount of continues, a finite number of, of lives to start with. And so it's a little bit, um, I can just press start. I don't have to coin up. So here, so here's a level select, easy, normal, hard, or MVS. So this is how the, car, the, the game would present if you were playing it in an AES console. Um, I'll just say normal. Um, so yeah, I mean, the presentation's a little bit different. And, uh, you know, a lot of you guys already know, like, you know, MVS, every, every game, cartridge game is, is the same, right? So the pinouts are different. So the the boards and the chips, the game itself that 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 are on the the chips on the cartridges, it's the same whether it's AES or MVS. It's the BIOS that's then telling it to run an AES mode if it's in the console, or if it's MVS, it's in an arcade machine. And you got the the UniBIOS, and you can flip back and forth between those things, and you can play whatever version you want because it it'll tell the cartridge to run the arcade or the console version. And that's essentially what's happening here, but it's emulation versus the, that hardware doing the switch. So um, I think um, I don't play in AES mode very often. Again, when I do, it's, it's the sports games where there's the timers. And so like uh, I already talked a little bit about like baseball stars professional on here. That's probably better to play in AES mode because you're not going to have this timer ticking down. You got to keep coining up to to fight that and get through a, an entire game. Um, but for most games, I think you know MVS is nice because you can um, you coin up and you can work through a game with a friend or whatnot. And um, you know somebody might not be as good. You don't want to be limited to the number of continues or or whatnot. So yeah, um, I I don't know. I I would. I would think most 95% of the time you're going to have this in, in MVS mode. Oh, Ken's uh, desperate to get an actual big red and considered building one from a blueprint. There's people that do that. I've noticed like there's people that will make reproduction cabinets like they're full size they look like the original things and if you're if you're good at that um at woodworking and and whatnot i'm not i wish i were but um yeah if you if you have the skills and the tools to do that that's definitely not a bad way to go delusionals arcade what's up man it's good to see him another guy speaking of arcade channels um really good stuff over there check out delusionals arcade if you guys get a chance Oh, so Neo Neo Turf Masters is the actual best Neo Geo game. That's that's interesting. We were talking about the worst Neo Geo games earlier, and what the worst of the worst were. That's a that's a tough list. Um, what the top games would be? I, I get asked that every now and then, and I feel like I change my answers every time somebody asks me that. On the Gween, yeah, yeah. Turf Masters is great. It can also be like really frustrating because you, you get like a good thing going, you think you're, you're on the home stretch for like a, a really good score and you got one hole that really just you, and, and you know, it's like hole 16 or something like that. And then you just totally botch it. And like, it's just so deflating. Yeah. I like turf masters. I, I would, I would probably put turf masters in my top 10. I don't know if I would say it's my top Neo Geo game, but I, it's it's in my top 10 for sure. Yeah, I'm not surprised that things got destroyed and broken um, 
playing turf masters for for sure i actually i i think i mentioned this on the video i did um for for some of the underrated games league bowling i i love that game it's so easy i mean there's things on it like you know anybody can pick up and play that but there are some there's some deeper game elements it's not crazy by any stretch but you know with kind of putting hook or spin on the ball uh, going left-handed, right-handed, the weight of the ball. There's some elements like that that you you know give you an intermediate, a, a little bit deeper of an experience. But that in the arcade cabinet downstairs, like more people play that almost than any other game that I have. Down. Everybody wants to play that. Anytime somebody comes over, they want to play league bowling. It's just so easy. You can get through. A, a, and if you, it's it reminds me a little bit of like. Um, you know, uh, almost like Splatoon in some ways, which is weird, but it's it's the timing that they have down in that you can get through a full game in league bowling and it's just the right cutoff. It's, you know, so if you're having a bad game, it's like, well, it's only a couple more minutes, you know, two minutes here and I'm done. I can start a new one. Um, but it's, it's it just seems like it's, it, they hit that stride. Like there's, there's just like that addictive tone to the game um, and playing competitively with somebody else, um, and 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 you just play game after game after game. It's it's just so it's it's so addicting. I, I love league bowling. Oh, is is Red Blood available in the server? Yeah, there's dip switch. I I think um, Chris just called that out. Yeah, there's there's dip sweat, uh, switch settings where you can enable blood there's soft dip settings too is where that's usually um is where that's usually found you can you can turn it i think it's usually labeled violence and you can turn it up or down splatoon bowling i know we just came up with that splatoon bowling would be the ultimate what were the worst neo geo games my top two worst for sure um Definitely Legend of Success Joe. Power Spikes 2 is definitely up there too. Um, those are probably my top two worst games. So that's a spoiler for whenever that video does come out. But um, yeah, I don't know. Those game, I There's just very little redeeming value um, playing those games. I've tried so hard with, with Power Spikes 2 to like um, just to find something about it that clicked with me or, or made it better maybe i've been missing something all this it no it's it's a bad game it's a terrible game oh riding hero riding hero sucks too you're right <laughs> that's a i i do not like that game uh robo army underrated beat em up um yeah, I would agree. I like Robo Army. I love the theme of that, and I love just the fact like that it it Robo Army screams like just screams like early '90s, like just the the style of the gameplay, the fact that it's a beat 'em up, the characters, the setting of the game, like everything about it just screams early '90s arcade. I I really do like that game. Um, yeah, Burning Fight not not so great as a beat 'em up. But Mutation Nation, I do like too. I think that's a decent, um, you know, if you want to talk about the beat em ups on Neo Geo, Mutation Nation's pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, Riding Hero, yeah, you're right. I mean, for the time, it, 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 it looks okay. It's just when you actually start playing it, it's you're in for a, a surprise or a disappointment. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Eight Man, I forgot about. I always forget about Eight Man. You're right. That's a that's another one. Eight Man's very repetitive. Like every every um, other sequence on that is just is the same. But I don't I don't certainly don't mind it. It's a nice it's nice to switch things up. And yeah, somebody asked about the Ronald Do uh, Ronald McDonald marquee again. I thank uh, Joe Sabo for switching that out before I got to review the unit. So now everybody can ask about that. But uh, good for him. He did a good job on. I'm, I'm joking. He did a really good job on the marquee. And uh, if you're interested in that, check out his website. Yeah, Irritating Maze is interesting. Now we're just kind of we're talking about games, which is fine. Um, Irritating Maze is is uh, it's like the only trackball. Actually, 
that's not in t- well it is true from a practical stance but it's the only tra- uh, trackball game for neo geo um pop and bounce if you go into the settings on pop and bounce there's an option for joystick versus um the track i don't know if it's called trackball it but you know what i mean you can so you can switch it but i don't think i think if you change it it doesn't do anything so you can't like i think people who have had the trackball set up or have tried to it, it, you can't play it but it makes sense like pop and bounce is a game you would want to play with a trackball it make it, it makes perfect sense but but um yeah irritating maze is the only one that actually works Uh, LCD or CRT? Are, are you guys asking about th- this? Is this is an LCD? Yeah, the fun factor. I would agree with you. The fun factor of Robo Army. I, if you, uh, yeah, obviously, you can't close your eyes and play a game. I, I almost said that, but if you did, or if you if you just kind of wiped out the scenery, the sounds, um, and you just kind of had these black and white visuals. I, I would think Mutation Nation plays better, but the fun factor of Robo Army, I think, does beat out Mutation Nation. I would agree with that. Would I get the ball for Irritating Maze? I, I saw somebody selling the control panel for it like a while back. It just seemed like so much work, honestly. For how often am I going to play Irritating Maze? Like, I have to be real with myself from time to time. Um, is do I need to spend? Um, and what do you want for that? Something it's like a hundred and seventy-five bucks or something. Like, do I need to spend that? Am I really gonna put that like temporarily onto my Neo Geo cabinet so that I can play irritate? Probably not. Um, so no, I, I probably I'm not gonna be picking up a trackball. I saw the cabinet um, for sale um maybe two years ago the the irritating maze cabinet and it's cool it's um it's got like these blowers on it and stuff and uh it's really unique but again i that's not something i i don't think i would buy that either even as a, a new it's just so niche which makes it cool don't get me wrong but it takes up space it's expensive if the game were fun like super fun and it was, you know, I mean, if it's no league bowling, right? Let's be honest. Uh, then I would probably pick something like that up. But it's, it's uh, irritating maze is just kind of this niche piece of the Neo Geo library that um, I'm happy I have the cart because it's part of the collection. Um, the Unibios gives you the option to play it with a controller, so you can do that. It's not a great experience, right? But um, yeah. You know, you can uh, you can still play it that way, but I'm not interested in going the trackball route or anything like that. Are RPG CRTs for retro gaming worth the hype? Um, I mean, I I love CRTs for retro gaming. I had two. I mean, I don't have the PVMs, the Sony PVMs or anything. And and th- by the way, thank you, David. I appreciate the the donation to the Mister Fund. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, so, David, I I mean, I I don't. I know a lot of people have the PVM mo- Sony PVM monitors, and people really tout those. Um, I never really got into that. I don't have um, RGB. Um, scart or you know i don't i don't i don't do that with with any of my stuff um but i do um i do have two sony vegas still with component in that's good enough for me and i do like using those from time to time if you if you if you're into light gun games it's really the the only i shouldn't say that because i saw a few videos that popped up this week um but it's really the only way for light gun games for the most part and it, it it gives you like that genuine feel of, of playing retro games. Having said all that, um, I have switched my main setup upstairs to an LCD. For what I do for capturing footage of games, um, it's a pain in the ass to switch out all of those component cables all the time. If you're you know, I, I had a switch box and um, it works right, but. Uh, it's a pain. It's just easier. HDMI is just, it's its just a, I know it's, it sounds like blasphemy coming from me, but HDMI really just is so, it's so convenient. 
and there's decent scalers out there now for retro games and I, you know, for somebody who has to capture footage and stuff from time to time for, for making videos, unhooking an HDMI cable and plugging it into, um, you know, like an Elgato, it's so much easier than fooling around with all of the stuff. So again, circumstances will come into play. It's cool to have if you want to go that route, but there's certainly nothing wrong with sticking with an LCD. I know that sounds like blast. I know people won't, won't like that, but um, it's it's just easier. I don't mind sharp pixels. I think they look great. I play my consoleized MVS on the LCD upstairs. I have um, uh, the um, RetroTank 2X Pro from Mike Chi. He did a good job with that. You know, it's a line doubler. It it works. Um, they're I think I can. T I mean, this is just us, right? There's there's 78 people in here. I'll tease this a little bit. There might be something more than the line doubler coming along soon, so stay tuned for that, um, which would be a really nice plug-and-play solution. Um, so yeah, you have options. You know, the OSSC obviously is, is it's a little bit more expensive than uh, the RetroTank 2X, but um, yeah, there's you, you definitely have options. Sorry, I I feel like I. Just, take forever to answer questions. Um, what do I have here? David, uh, David, I answered David's question, I'm trying to scroll down here and catch up a little bit. Um, yeah, I see. Yeah. I, you focus on buying consoles and ever drives without CRTs. I, I mean, I think that's fine. Like, you know, if you decide you want to pick up like a Sony Vega, I mean, just look at Craigslist or like the Facebook marketplace. People will give those things away. Like, or, they'll charge $10 just so they don't have like strangers showing up at their door. But, um, yeah, like I, you can, you can certainly go back. It's, there's no, there's no trouble going back. Um, where are we at here? What dream cabs do I want? That come, that's a question that comes up every now and then. I don't even know if this is a dream cab at this point. Like it's, it's something that I, I, I really want a Terminator two. <laughs> It's it just, I mean, it's a common game. Uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. And I've been scouting and every, every time I find one, it's either too far away or somebody wants like way too much money for it. So, um, that's probably one that's on my hit list, but you did say dream cabs. So I always throw out, um, I always throw out uh, time traveler, like, um, that it's such a bizarre game. It's not a very good game. It's probably goes along with what we were just talking about for uh, irritating maze. It's an astronomically priced cabinet. Anytime you see it for sale, I mean, it's it's usually like ten grand. Anytime it comes up, um, you know, it's got this holographic thing, but it's not a real hologram. It's you know, it's it's like a a rear projection bounced off of a, a mirror. Um, and, and it kind of looks like the guys are like floating, but I played it a lot when I used to go to Hershey Park as a kid. They had it there. It's usually like a dollar or dollar fifty a play. It was it was really expensive, but um, I, I I it's it's kind of like a Dragon's Lair type gameplay. You should, guys should go look it up if, if if you don't know what I'm talking about. But that would be a dream cabinet, I guess, because um, it's just they're just too expensive, you know, and then that whole projection thing breaks on you or whatever, like, what are you going to do? Like most cabinets and stuff that you get JAMA cabinets and you know, you've got, you know, now you've got LCDs, but CRTs and those old cabinets, if they break, you have a, you have a path to get it fixed or, or get it remedied. That kind of thing, you're, it's pretty niche. And then you're in, you're in the hole, like 10 grand trying to figure out what to do, but that's a dream cab for me. I would say a, a time traveler. I also like mad dog McCree. Um, that's another cabinet that I don't see. You don't see that very often. It doesn't, it doesn't come up again, big projection screen type setup, and, um, that it just takes up a lot of space. The guns I know historically haven't lasted on on that machine. They they seem to to have gone. Most of them have gone bad. Um, so, but if you could find something like that in working order, like that would that would definitely be like a a, a show stopper type piece for for the arcade. I, I actually 
I, I don't even know. Like the last time I, I saw a mad, like uh, an actual like Mad Dog McCree, like set up working, um, like in a video or anybody's like home arcade. I, I, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen that. Andy asking, I don't have a P.O. Box. I, I actually, I don't. That's, uh, that's actually like a, um, I, I just never bothered doing that. It's pretty much like at this point when I do live streams and, and people can donate, um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I don't have like channel subscriptions or anything like that either. Like I, I actually went through the effort of setting up, um, you know, there's different tiers and stuff and, and like you get the little icons and I, what I actually, what I did was I had, um, the Neo Geo logo. And then after so many months, the diff, they, they were the Neo Geo logo with the white lettering filled in. So the top that says Neo in yellow, you know, after so many months it went yellow and then the E went yellow and I had that all set up and there's some emojis and stuff. I just never, I never activated it. I, it's hard because I feel like um, I feel like like there's people like yourself who who do want to donate and 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 you know promote this kind of stuff and encourage it, and I, I love that and it's it's really it's really helpful honestly for the amount of time that you know I know some of the people in the if they're still in the chat will talk about that the time investment like Retro Ralph like I you know he's doing videos like every other day. Um, you know, delusionals arcade, like putting together arcade videos, it's, it's hard work and it takes away from, you have to like it because it takes away from doing actual arcade work or just sitting and playing games. You're, you're doing YouTube videos, you're filming, you're putting a script together, you're, you're editing and it takes hours to do that kind of stuff. And so you really have to like it. Um, the whole creation piece of that. Um, so anytime people want to donate is really helpful. It's really nice. It's encouraging because it's like, yeah, people do are actually are, are actually valuing some of this stuff. Um, but at the same time, like opening up subscriptions, like for the channel for, for me or putting like a PayPal link, it, it also kind of makes me feel like more tied to like have to do stuff. And I can't always do that. I mean, I was talking earlier, um, when we got started here, that it's been hard. I mean, I've been doing a video. I, I typically try to do a video every week and now it's probably like every 10 days because I'm, I'm just in a slump with work and like real job. And then I'll come out of that and then, you know, it'd probably be every week again. But um, I don't know. I, 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 I keep going back and forth. I've never enabled like the donations, um, uh, you know, as far as um, like a PayPal link or Patreon or even the subscriptions that are like built in YouTube, even though that's like all ready to go, I could just turn that on. I just, I just haven't. And I don't know, maybe I'll feel differently in 2021, but it, the hard thing is it's like, I don't, I don't magically get more time. If anything, the longer this goes and the older I get, the, the less time I have, which, um, so it makes it, it makes it tough. I would like to find a way to, to do something a little more, um, because so many people have asked more recently. And so I'm still evaluating those types of, of options, I think. It is hard to get a channel up and running. Trust me, I know. I've been doing this for a few years. And the, the more niche things that you do, it helps because like you pull in like for this, like, like, okay, we're, we're, we're talking about Neo Geo, right? You got Ronald McDonald on a marquee and we're talking about that. But like the people in general, I'm just, I'm generalizing if, if somebody's, I don't want anybody to take offense to this, but in general, those, the people who are into Fortnite and mainstream gaming and who are talking about Zelda and Mario every single day on Twitter, they're not, you know, and that's a large portion of, of gaming and you know the the under the under 30 crowd like I which is a big big population and a big viewer base like I don't carry that like I, I I can I know that and there might be exceptions to that there might be somebody in in the chat that's an exception to that but you are the exception and I know that for a fact looking at my statistics and my analytics on YouTube 
I do not carry an under 30 user base. I just I just don't. So it makes it that much harder to run a channel when you because you're you're asking for adults who are later in life who are working you know higher end jobs or into more niche things themselves and have presumably a lot have families you know are in later stages of their, you're you're asking for their time to you know watch videos that you've put together so it is definitely hard depending on what what it is you're doing the content the type of focus that you're doing um with a full MVS set, any thoughts given to publishing some sort of MVS compendium to educate and entertain readers? It's funny you mentioned that. Um, so I, I picked up uh, a few extra viewers just because I mentioned Fortnite. Uh, see, YouTube picks that up. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's funny you, you mentioned that because it's I, I, like Pat Contry did his whole, um, you know, NES guidebook. And, um, you know, I'm certainly not on the level of, of Pat uh, country by any stretch. But again, it goes back to what I, we were just talking about. Nintendo and the NES guidebook is going to have a bigger population that he can turn around and sell that book to because er, a lot more people remember Nintendo or are, are interested in going through that book and looking at it. They just are. Like they just are. Neo Geo is a little bit more niche especially maybe more so in America. It seems like it's a very worldly format. You know, a lot of people weighing in from, I, I get people in here from Greece and from South America and we get people from Japan and um, all over. And, and that's great. Um, but I do think like the arcade gamer, it's just not a, as big of a population as you would see for like your Segas and, and your, your Nintendo. So it's hard to to want to dedicate time to like putting together like a encyclopedia of of MVS games or really Neo Geo games um, to just kind of go through and and it's just I don't I don't know that the audience is really there. I mean it's it's a tough pull even just doing YouTube sometimes, then alone to sell a, an actual take time to write a book and then and then sell it. I I wish I had the time to do that. It would be a definitely a passion prod prod project but yeah i don't i don't know only fans yeah nobody trust me um nobody nobody's well i shouldn't say nobody um but uh yeah i don't think i'm gonna get too many subscribers through only fans yeah you're right uh dj i i'm yeah it is tough to find videos about stuff that's fun and informative and and that's also a line too like um i think retro ralph does a really good job with his videos on on covering topics and talking about things that he's exploring and and he he kind of treads that that line really really well of being informative but also having a little bit of theatrics to make it a little bit more entertaining I, you know, I've been told that uh, yeah, I'm I'm not funny or theatrical, which is fine. I, I I'm probably not. I have a lot of like dry humor that things that I find funny that a lot of people don't. Uh, I try to I try to you know, throw things here and there into videos and make them a little bit more entertaining. But um, I I get caught up easily. Like you know, like when we started this video, and I'm like, oh, here's the stick, and you know, and this this comes off like really easily, and these are concave. Uh, buttons and these are kind of back and, and, and I'm kind of like off and running um, and sometimes it's easy to forget um, you know you, you hope that people are interested but um, it's yeah tying in like a story or telling a joke here and there um, it's it definitely helpful but I don't always do that I'm not always great at that see I told you there'd be an exception there's um, there's Danny. Uh, he's under 30 um, and in in his 20s and owns a Neo Geo. That's perfect. That's great. Barricade's 29. All right. So you guys are, are for sure the exceptions to the rules then, um, like 100%. Uh, I, could, I could show you my analytics. I, I have like a 2% a viewership of, of people that are under 30. Well, it's not that low. Actually, I have like a 2% female viewership, which I think is pretty common. Um, for a lot of gaming channels, but um, 
probably one of those people or it's Lily. Oh, Marty. Uh, how well do those cave PGM conversions play? Any issues? Um, yeah, they play really well. I, I mean, I, it's, I've never owned a genuine uh, <laughs> cave board. They're, they're so expensive. Uh, you guys tired of looking at Sengoku 2 yet? Uh, so I, I can't really say that I can compare it back to an original board, but everything that I've heard from um, you know other people and the, the, the games play identical, there are some concerns with some of the early conversions and stuff that were made with with the way um, they were constructed. It, there's a there's a technical thing with the way the voltage is regulated. I think on them, the way people call that, and that since has been addressed and fixed in in the versions that I think are being made now by um, the guys over at Arcade Forums, DJ um, uh, or Sheep Nova and some other people so i think those are all kind of like i think it's been taken care of mine um i should i probably should look because um mine i got pretty early on and i'm pretty sure it's not the ideal design but i i, I haven't had any problems they don't run 24 7 in my cabinet which isn't a great excuse um to not have that done the right way but um i just haven't gotten around to fixing it Yeah, see, DJ Shaq is saying they have a they have some issues. Summarize my review on this unit again. So, yeah, I mean, just in a few sentences, because that is that was supposed to be the point of the chat tonight. Um, I, I, I like it. I, I'm impressed with the build quality. Like it's it's heavy. I like that it's heavy. It's not going anywhere. Um, I think the controls leave a little bit to be desired, particularly the sticks. Um, but I was I was actually pretty pleased with the LCD screen. It's nice, bright, colorful. There's no like real ghosting or or blurring when you're playing a game. I think that's that's incredibly helpful. It's not some it doesn't behave like a cheap LCD. I can say that. And the scan lines actually, um, I'm not a big fan of scan lines normally, but I think they look really good. Um, the pixel scan line option looks really good on this. So, I mean, overall, I yeah, I mean, if you were interested in this, I don't think you'd be, you know what it is. I don't think you're going to be terribly disappointed. You probably just want to figure out. We gotta we're gonna have to open this up at some point and, and look to see what the substitute sticks are for this because I'm not. I, I wouldn't want to play with these, but that again, it's a personal opinion. So overall, yeah, it's not it's not bad, but it's also expensive. It's 500 bucks, um, right? I, I think it's is it 500 bucks with the riser? It's 400 dollars just for the bar top, I think. And it's an extra hundred for the riser. I think I'm getting that right. If I'm if I'm not, you guys can call that out. Oof! Dropped a thousand dollars on on the PGM conversion. Wow, that's uh, that is that is a lot. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Chris. I do think it's it's also a. I think it's an um, the LCD is probably an IPS as well. That's that's my guess. There you go, $500 with the riser. So four, $449 for the bar top, $500 for the riser. The riser alone, if you buy it later, is $100 though. So yeah, whatever. Uh, honestly, I, you know, prior to having it, the probably the biggest revelation I'm having since, and again, it's only been a handful of hours, I, I think I would have thought that I wanted the riser, like I'm, I just want the whole setup. I actually like it just as it is. Like I like it without the riser, just kind of plopped on you know my my desk here. And it's movable. I can take it around. I don't have to like stand or sit on a stool. I I, I kind of like it I, literally as a bar top. Like I think it's I think it's nice like this. I don't know if I'd get the riser, me personally. Do I have any dogs that I can show? 
Um, did you, like 30 seconds ago, did you hear her scratching at the door? Like, cause I'm, I've been in the office here with the door shut. Um, I do, I have a beagle. She's, um, I don't know where she is. I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna go and get her. That can be another time. Um, it's funny if you're, if you're watching, you, if you look at the, um, the MVSX on the, on the side of the screen and I've got, um, like right here, Hopefully my hand will show up. That's a, there's a little bit of, of a delay on on my side, but um, if you if you look where my hand is, you can kind of see that green space. That behind there is my um, 30 plus year old turtle that I've had since fourth grade. You can you, you might get a glimpse of him swimming by in that little tiny space. Man, all these people want to see the dogs and the pets. I know I've I've lost everybody's interest on the MVSX, and I've exhausted my um, my uh, time on on live stream when when everyone just wants to see the dog. Um, I can probably get you know, the turtle here in a second. I'm, I'm going to wrap things up. I actually didn't eat dinner yet, so I'm probably going to go here pretty soon. I appreciate everybody stopping by. <laughs> all right, you you donated five dollars. You want to go? You want me to? All right, I'll go get the dog. All right. I mean, I feel. I mean, you 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 put that on me. It's like I'm obligated now. If Lily's still watching, she should bring Mimi in here for me to make it this a lot easier, so I don't have to abandon the live stream. If she's upstairs, I'm basically gonna have to like abandon my whole my whole setup. Good lord, you guys. The things I do for YouTube. Well, let me go get the dog. All right. All right. Here we go. This is Mimi. She is our beagle. Mimi is, I think, 13 years old. So she is she's pretty well behaved. She uh, she's at the vet a couple weeks ago. She had problems with her back leg, but uh, she's doing just fine. Had a concussion last December and also came out of that. So uh, yeah, this is Mimi. She goes for I think she's going for two walks a day now. She she always gets out on one, but um, two a day lately. Now that it's cooler, she handles she handles the cool weather weather a lot better than she does being out in the heat. Wow, there, Mimi. Look, your vet bills are getting paid for by the nice people joining <laughs> joining the stream. I, I greatly appreciate that. Oh man, look at Retro Ralph is still here. See, look at this. Retro Ralph, all you need to do is just get your pets. That's all you got to do to have a successful live stream. Nobody cares or gives a shit about the MVSX anymore. Nobody wants to talk about Neo Geo. It's all about beagles and turtles right now. All right, I'm going to put Mimi down here. She's a larger dog and doesn't really like to be held. It's okay. Um, Mimi's made cameos in videos before. I think the Virtua Fighter, see she's coughing now. Um, Mimi's made ca cameos. when I've, The Virtua Fighter video I did when I was in the garage, I think she like walks by at the end. And there's also, um, somebody actually caught it too, which I was really impressed by. Um, because I didn't see it when I was editing. But one of the videos I did like two years ago, don't ask me which one, her tail just kind of like, cause the can I'm sitting down and she's obviously lower than I am, but her tail just kind of like cuts through at one point, but it's blurred in the background, but, um, yeah, she was there. So she sneaks in and makes little cameos every now and then. He seriously that, um, I mean, Zohar, I mean, he did, he legit did pay $10 to see Mimi. So I feel like 
at some point, if you're ever in the central Pennsylvania area, I think, you know, you, you're, you're <laughs> Ralph, don't encourage this. Ralph, do not encourage this. Oh my God. Mimi just stealing the show here at the end. Um, yes, you're, you, thank you, Ralph. I appreciate it. I'm going to come spam one of your live streams with money asking you to do odd things at some point. Yeah, you're in California. I, I come out to California every now and then, but Mimi does not come with me. Um, did anybody catch the turn? Oh, there's Yertle. You guys, I, I can see Yertle kind of uh, passing through. My, yeah, my turtle's name is Yertle. Yertle the turtle. I was in fourth grade when I got him, so what do you, what do you want from me? Oh, there's Lily. Yeah, Lily. Um, Ralph and Zohar are paying money to see Mimi. It's kind of like OnlyFans, but for our naked dog. So, I mean, whatever floats these people's boats, you know. I told them Mimi was at the vet not too long ago. So, you know, she's got medical bills that need paid. See you, Ralph. Good seeing you, man. Have a good night. <laughs> That's okay, man. I appreciate it. So, I think, uh, I think we'll end on a high note with, with Mimi and... Uh, and, and some pet talk. I appreciate everybody joining tonight and uh, taking a look, an early look at the MVSX. I really, again, I, I, I don't know, you know, I haven't had a chance to do a deep dive. I just kind of thought I'd show it to you guys, would look at a few things and um, we can talk about um, this in a little bit more detail, probably in a video, maybe next week. I'll, I'm going to film some of this this weekend and put some thoughts together and put it out there. But I appreciate everybody stopping by. Definitely um, going to uh, have to do a little bit more digging, a little bit more work on this. And um, Chris, I, I you know you sent over an email and appreciate your thoughts and some ideas for looking at uh, this in a little bit more depth. Um, I am going to stay away from the other reviews and everything still until I'm at least done my video. Um, again, just to kind of keep. Um, my thoughts um, from being a little bit biased from maybe seeing something else that somebody else didn't like or did like. So um, look for that next week. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe. Don't really need to comment, I guess, at this point. But um, if you're not subscribed, definitely help me out and uh, click the like button and, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.